Hey guys, welcome to Financial Maths. So, let's say for example you go to the bank and you put 500 Rand in the bank and you leave it there for two years. Well, if you had to go back to the bank and look at how much money you would have, you would have more than 500 Rand. The bank gives us interest when we put money in the bank. This bank has told you that they will give you 10% PA. Now that stands for per annum. That's just a fancy way of saying per year. What is 10% of 500 Rand? Well, of means times and percentage is 10 over 100 times 500. And that will give you 50 Rand. But that's 10% per year. Your money is going to be in the account for two years. And so you will earn a total of 100 Rand. So when you go look at your money in two years time, you would have earned 100 Rand from the bank. And so your total would now be the 500 Rand plus the 100 Rand. And so now you have 600 Rand. Now, thankfully, we never have to go calculate it like this. This isn't the 15th century, guys. We've got a formula. So this formula over here does all of that for us. So A is your final amount. P is the starting amount. I is the percentage. And N is the so check how cool this is P well that's your starting amount you started with 500 Rand your percentage is 10% now you can either type in 10% some calculators have a percentage feature the most popular calculator that students use in South Africa is the Casio that one does have a percentage you must just look out for it or what a lot of students like to do is they say 10 over a hundred and then the number of years is 2. And so you literally just go type all of this in on the calculator like that. And so I'll quickly show you what it looks like. So we're going to type in the 500 Rand. You say bracket. Then you say 1 plus. Oh, now if you want to use the percentage, you would say 10. Then you would say shift. And then over here, uh, where is it now? There's a percentage sign just above the 8 and the 9. Can you see there's a little percentage there? You'd push that. But if you want to do the other method, you would say 10 over 100. Then you say times, and then there's two years. Boom, 600 Rand. And that is exactly how much we had earlier, 600 Rand. So this answer, or this formula, gives you the final answer, and you don't have to go add the interest or anything like that. So just be careful though. So you started with 500 Rand, it becomes, 600 Rand. So how much did you actually earn? Well, your interest will be the 600 Rand minus 500 Rand. And so you earned 100 Rand. That's how much you actually earned at the bank. You didn't earn 600 Rand because you already had 500 Rand to start. All right, so here's two practice questions. I would highly advise you pause the video quickly and try them yourself. You have got the answers given to you. So go ahead, good luck. All right, so the way that this would work is for number one, it says a person invests 200 Rand at a bank over a four year period. The bank pays them 12%, determine the final amount. Okay, well we know that there's now this handy formula that we use, where P is always your starting amount. I is always the percentage, where you can either type in 12%, or you have to say 12 over 100. Then the number of years is 4. You type all of that in on the calculator and you get 296. That is the total amount that the person has. How much interest did the bank actually give them? Well, that would be 296 minus 200. And so the bank actually gave them 96 Rand. That's just for extra information. The actual answer is this one. Number two, a thousand Rand is invested for three years. The bank offers an interest rate of 8% PA. Remember PA is per year. Determine the final amount. So back to our formula where we're starting off with a thousand Rand. 
the interest rate is 8%, so I'm just going to go 8 over 100, and the number of years is 3. Type that all in, and you get 1,240. And that's it, guys. So it's a nice formula that helps you to calculate simple interest. By the way, this is what we've been doing in this lesson is all simple interest. There is another type of interest called compound, which we'll be tackling in the next couple of lessons.